day dear students in the previous class we were talking about the situations which really led to the uh, situation that was there in uh, prolog um in act 2 you have seen the situation of uh, parvasu the confrontation of parvasu and his wife and his father parvasu and uh, how he Uh, killed his father it was not an accidental but he claims that it was accidental to his brother and arvasu was so taken up by the loss of mithila he failed to turn up at the um, meeting of her uh, clan and uh, th- that made them so angry that they decided or her father decided to have her wedding immediately to the person who offers for her so uh, arvasu was not he was almost like in a trance uh, you know, by the um, the sorrow that was weighing him down that he just couldn't understand what parvasu was telling him he just uh, did as parvasu asked him to do bury the father uh, because her, his brother told him that uh, he accidentally killed his father and because he had to uh, complete the fire sacrifice as a chief priest uh, he can't do the penitence uh, for that any son of the father will do so he just bent everything the rules and the uh, ceremony everything for his comfort and uh, put it on arvasu do um, uh, his uh, Uh, sister-in-law told him not to do that he is the the one person who killed the father is parvasu and uh, you shouldn't take it up but arvasu was so obedient so uh, taken up by the sorrow of his mind that he just didn't have the will power to say anything protest in uh, anything in protest to parvasu so we have seen the situation there act 3 now opens Uh, act three opens in the outskirts of the city uh, you will find the place all strewn with the bodies and they are all asleep and you will also find nitilai sleeping next to arvasu so um, uh, the the situation here is something that we are, we are not expecting and uh, the in the in act 2 we have seen how arvasu after the burial of his father funeral of his father um burning the corpse and um, you know doing penitence he comes and sits in the uh, place which is allotted to the other brahmins and uh, parvasu finds him there and he was disturbed for a moment he immediately points his hand to arvasu and asks him certain questions for which he knew that he will get a uh, non committal answer and uh, arvasu will not uh, deceive him or will not let his secret out and so he tells uh, the or he asks the question who where are you coming from from my father's funeral and the penitential rites who uh, who killed your father it was not a normal uh, death it was a murder who killed his father the, your father a son of his that is how arvasu gives the answer he didn't say parvasu my brother killed my father no he didn't do that because his devotion to his brother was so much and so uh, parvasu was uh, knows him so well and so he uh, gets up and makes so much of ruckus and says that it's not right that a person who had killed his father should be here and uh, this is holy ground and the guards take parvasu uh, guards uh, take uh, takes hold of arvasu and um, beats him up and then pulls him out of there and you will find that this is so heartbreaking and arvasu repeatedly asks the question why brother why and you will find that act 2 ends with this so here you find the dramatis setting the scene for the conclusion or the uh, certain uh, incidents leading to a proper conclusion and in act 3 you will find nitlai sleeping next to arvasu so naturally we wonder what is happening here so arvasu gets up and he looks around 
and he finds a lot of people, strange people around him. And Nitilai also gets up and finds Aravasu and he and she feels his forehead to know that the fever had gone down. And so she is so very happy now because uh, she is uh, one person who feels that uh, uh, this is indeed uh, <coughs> something that she had been taking care of for uh, for some time. The talk between Nitilai and Aravasu reveals how Nitilai saved his life because he was beaten to near death and he was left in a cemetery by the guards of the king. At the words of the chief priest Paravasu, his own brother, they had beaten him to a pulp and had just spared his life. And Aravasu had only one question to his brother. And the question is, why? Why are you doing this? Why? Is that why has got so many meanings, so many questions in it. And uh, when he was, uh, and he was uh, left in a cemetery by the guards, and um, I also was uh, telling Nitilai about it, and uh, uh, we understand that he is so heartbroken, not by the beatings, but by the by the behavior of his dear brother Paravasu, and he just even now he just couldn't understand the uh, why he was doing that because. We find that Aravasu is a person who uh, thinks always uh, in a straightforward manner. He just do not understand Paravasu, his brother. And Paravasu's wife had already told Aravasu not to take on things that Paravasu tells him to do. And uh, Aravasu was so devoted because Paravasu was talking to his brother as if though his wife had not spoken. As if though her words doesn't matter because his brother will not listen to other, any other person, only to him. That kind of devotion this brother has. And knowing that Parvasu had questioned him in front of all the others at the uh, fire sacrifice. And Arvasu will not reveal the name of Parvasu or his um, uh, hand in the killing of his uh, father. Nothing. So Arvasu is very careful about that. Yes, God's intelligence, he is not a dumb fellow, but the, the devotion, the love had blinded him to the faults of his brother Paroso. And he was beaten to death and left alone in a cemetery by the guards of the king where he lost consciousness. And you will find Nitilai coming up and um, braving the anger of her brother and her uh, husband, new husband. She has come up when People came to know because this has spread like wildfire. People uh, had uh, talked about this. They have nothing else to talk except how Arvas was beaten by the guards and how he was, uh, the uh, news is that he had killed his father. That is, this is how it goes. But no way does, uh, the, uh, does he say that he had killed his father. So uh, Parvasu had made it look as if though it is Arvasu who had committed the crime. So people also being simple-hearted, they tried to believe, they uh, believe the chief priest because in their eyes, the chief priest is almost godlike and nothing can, they have great powers also. You will find such talk between the people, especially Nitlai and um, uh, Nitlai's father and uh, the acting manager and things. Uh, they, they, these people know the power of a chief priest also, that of a Brahmin. And so you find here a situation and Aravasu feels that all these happened to prevent his acting and marrying Nitilai. Because he wanted to marry Nitilai and that was prevented when his brother uh, tells him to, uh, when um, his father kills Ayavakri and he had to do the burial and he was late and so he couldn't marry Nitilai. And once again, he uh, uh, if he married Nitlai, he'll be able to act. But now he can't because his uh, brother had told him that he is a Brahmin, and so he can't do, uh, he can't act, or he can't be an actor. So he goes on like a madman. He says that all this happened to prevent his acting and marrying Nitlai. So he puts try, or tries to find out one excuse after the other. He goes on like a madman. And he is being very dramatic in his sorrow. And Nitilai talks to him and calms him down and dissuades him from taking the vengeance he plans. He really wanted to go 
and take vengeance on his brother and ask him the question why once again and she tells him it is better not to because she knows how uh, parvasu had acted and she knows quite well that arvasu is not the person who killed the father and the brother was putting all the blame on him and uh, he say she says that what is the difference now between uh, if you try to go and uh, kill your kill your brother because you can't kill him. the bloodshed is not for him maybe it is for so many people but it is not for him because she knows that she he is a very simple hearted person and as such bloodshed is not the uh, the real uh, way for him and he, if he if he is still burning with a lot of anger he can find another solution so he she asked him to remain as such pure and very uh, um, simple person as he is because this is the arrow so that she fell in love with and even though she is married to uh, another fellow she doesn't want to want arvasu to marry her but they would lead a life with a like brother and sister but she would like to be with him and if she is uh, you know, there with him she feels that she'll be able to protect him from harm in one way or the other and that is the simple hearted little life speaking it also shows her depth of love and she says he can uh, get married to any other person she doesn't mind but the only thing is that she would like to be with him and so you find that nitilai had uh, really been <clears throat> uh, a person of a uh, staunch courage and strength nitilai had run away from the from the jamma of her husband and when she heard what had happened to arvasu and it is she who had come and saved him and taken care of him for 3 days and uh, realizes that she is uh, after 3 days she realizes that he is better and when arvasu learns of the way in which she had reached him that is running away from her husband and uh, trying to take care of him for 3 days or more than 3 days taking him from the cemetery and taking care of him in her own way with her herbs and her medicines and uh, now he is better she, and arvasu was not feeling grateful he was shocked because he knew quite well what is going to happen because nitilas tribe is a hunting tribe and they know how to hunt down the quarry or the animal that they are going to kill and that gem of her husband and her brother they are intent on finding her and killing her that is honor killing because she had brought shame to the tribe by running away from her husband and being with another man in what sense the the good and the bad is not recognized there it is just the the type of civilization that they have they are not uh, uh, civilized enough but they are like uh, hunting people and uh, if something wrong is done then the next step is to kill them so uh, arvasu knows this quite well and this is why he was utterly shocked to learn that he had been unconscious for 3 days and uh, he is, and uh, uh, nitila had been away from her husband for those days and that she is going to be killed by her husband and her brother and moreover he wants to confront parvasu he did not uh, um, understand why he was so uh, gone for 3 days maybe he just escaped her death and even now even though in his utterly weak he wants to confront parvasu and to ask him this question why he did this and why what is the reason behind this so here <clears throat> you find that it is indeed something that um, uh, this is something that uh, they have to settle first arvasu knew that nitilai's people they are hunters they will bend, uh, beat her up and they will uh, uh, they will kill her that is they will hunt her down and will kill her and so he urges her to leave the place 
she gives him the uh, fruit that she had uh, with her with her and uh, speaks of the actor manager and his family who saved him the story of how they found him and how nitla nursed him so i also knew that Nit, um, that nitla's people they are just uh, reaching him or uh, reaching this place and in the scene you will find a, a separate scene where nitla's brother and nitla's husband they are just uh, uh, settling and uh, settling for the night and they have made a fire and they are in the hunting mode in the sense that they are all set up for the hunter uh, for the hunting and tracking the quarry the quarry being nitla and she gives uh, she knows that uh, she will be killed and uh, arvasu ask her to leave the place and hide somewhere and uh, she did not mind uh, his talking but gives him the fruit that she had plucked from the forest the little things that she had and she speaks of the actor manager and his family who saved him and the actor manager and the family are so grateful to her because his uh, children were crying with a uh, uh, hunger and she had something uh, with her to uh, nourish them some foods that she plucked from here and there and she knew quite well where to find food from in the forest from nature she knows how to uh, take food what all things will be edible and uh, those who are given to this family they were able to cook and have something that kind of poverty they were going undergoing and it, to them nitla is a savior and a person who nourishes people and so here also she is uh, the one person who nourishes uh, arvasu and saves him and even uh, appeases his hunger by giving him the fruit and the story of how they found him and how nitla nursed him uh, back to uh, uh, life was revealed by the actor manager and his family the actor manager tells him uh, how nitla found food for his children she knows the woods and she put medicines on the wound of his brother's legs and for arvasu also so they are so uh, fe- they are feeling so much of admiration for nitla and so they have uh, the feeling that nitla will be able to find a solution for everything and they are not regarding her as a, just a tribal woman but as a benefactor a person who will nourish them who will save them and uh, will ward off death from the from them and this is exactly what she had been doing to arvasu also so they have so much of admiration for her though he is the one who found him in the cemetery he had taken him from there and it like from the words of the other people because news travels fast they he she came to know of others he she searched around being a hunter herself she was able to find out uh, the place where arvasu was and from there she had uh, cared for him tended for him and for his sickness and for his wounds and found food for him and she, uh, she was grateful to the actor manager for saving arvasu and so she uh, extended her hospitality by tending to that family also by curing the uh, actor manager's brother's legs because it was wounded and uh, caring for uh, the actor manager's family by providing food for them and the, in the words of the actor manager he says she knows the woods in the sense that the wood can provide you with the food if you know how to look for it in the proper manner and she did and she was able to find food for the starving children of the actor manager's family so here you find nitila as nature or a nourishing uh, nourishing woman and having a generous heart and a generous mind a generous heart in the sense that uh, she has uh, taken up or adopted the actor manager's family also because she is grateful that uh, they had saved her dear arosu so that kind of uh, hospitality or that kind of generosity is very scarce in people maybe you will thank them with words and will be done with that but she took care of that family and understood their needs and in her own way she was able to find a solution for that 
that is why she is uh, uh, taken to be the uh, la uh, like uh, mother nature so you find here the uh, character of nitla slowly emerging from a mere partner of aravasu from a mere tribal woman to something more it is extending to something more and that is how the characters evolved in this play so here you find that aravasu was found an actor when the actor manager had gone to bury his old man in the cemetery and uh, aravasu uh, asked him the question why do you bury and not cremate because in aravasu's uh, caste that is for the brahmins if a person is dead then you cremate the body of the person but uh, aravasu heard that the actor manager had gone to the cemetery to bury his old man so why do you not cremate and bury the body the actor manager gives an explanation they are actors and his expl explanation is simple and goes along with nature and it is more eco friendly and he says earth gave us the body when we are done with our life we hand over the job our inheritance to our children and we hand back the body to the earth to nourish the earth because earth had given us the body because they believe that earth gave us the body and when we are done means when our life is all uh, over we hand over the job to our children like acting that is handed over to our children and the body is brought back to the earth or given back to the earth it is a simple enough explanation and that also was uh, much taken up by this explanation he just doesn't understand why they are burying and not cremating maybe these people are not like the brahmins and maybe because of that they are doing that but the actor manager has got a very simple but effective explanation for their uh, uh, way of life or their life and it's a uh, it's a difference with with the brahmin life and so i also was uh, forced to ask this question and being a brahmin he is familiar with uh, cremation but not with the uh, burial and so when the actor manager gives his explanation it need not be the explanation for the other people from the other caste but this is the explanation in his own manner he had made that explanation and you can believe it or not but this is the belief that they have and it is in this sense that they are burying the body so that the earth will be nourished with the body of course it is one way of explanation then uh, you will find that the actor manager was planning to leave the town and also was excited and uh, uh, nitila had asked him to abandon all bloodshed all plans of bloodshed so arvasu was excited and he has a plan arvasu offers the actor manager as one of the actors uh, to compensate the actor manager's brother's absence the brother's leg was uh, um, uh, wounded and nitla had cared for it but even then that brother will not be able to sing and dance dancing is also part of the drama and so he is uh, one person lacking in his troupe so arvasu offers himself as one of the actors but the actor manager was not convinced because after all arvasu is a brahmin one reason he can't act or he is not an actor the other reason the most brahmins do not know how to act little does he know about arvasu and his acting skills but arvasu means uh, he needs to dance, sing and dance arvasu starts acting dancing ma matching the steps of the actor manager so actor manager starts dancing and arvasu also uh, starts acting and dancing and he matches steps with the actor manager so that there is a rapport between the actor manager and arvasu and uh, the actor manager was so impressed by the skill of arvasu arvasu had been roaming the um, the uh, forest with nitlai and was singing and dancing 
and Nitilai also was singing and dancing and he, uh, it, he was the free spirit and there is a lot of freedom there and that freedom had given him to uh, enough time to perfect his steps and so he has that agility of an actor not like that of a Brahmin who uh, is always doing uh, one um, puja or the other because his brother was doing the priestly thing, uh, priestly uh, duties. So he was spared. So he could just roam around. He can just uh, jump and uh, act and play, imitate uh, the animal sound, the steps of the animals. And uh, there is a playfulness in him. And this has come in quite handy. And so he knew that he is a good actor. He had that uh, feeling to be an actor or he desired to be an actor but because of the words of his brother Parosu, he had uh, stopped acting or all the acting skills. So here now there is an uh, opportunity. He wants to convince the actor manager that he can have a drama or he can have a play and uh, there will be one more actor. You need not be uh, uh, you need not despair with the brother in the absence of your brother uh, you can have another actor this is what I also wants to convince the actor manager with and the actor manager was really really impressed and he just uh, changes his plan of leaving the town because the town is not going to have any uh, place and so they'll have to go to another place where they can have the play or even find something else because the poverty is so much. So here you find that he was really <clears throat> uh, impressed by this and uh, the he was really uh, taken up and it is at this time that Lai enters. She was scared. Her brother and her husband are there and she knows that they are hunting. Hunting not animals but her and they will remain silent till they find the quarry and kill it. This is the manner in which they have been living. So she knows the uh, way it is done. Aravasu also knows quite well. They are a hunting tribe and they are very skilled. Uh, they are extremely skilled hunters and they know how to follow a quarry and uh, they have also this uh, this uh, factor that is once they start uh, hunting or uh, chasing the animal or tracking the animal they will remain silent they will not talk they'll talk only after killing them and they are silent and in the on the stage you will find a separate portion where you find two people uh, having a fire and you know, they are just uh, uh, spending time night time day and one is Nitilai's brother and the other is her husband and they have all the weapons for hunting and what are they hunting? They are hunting Nitilai and they are tracking Nitilai and they are about to reach her and she just couldn't uh, hide her uh, uh, hide her uh, traces and uh, even if she hides they are very good hunters and very good trackers also they will reach the quarry and kill it. And uh, she is here very much scared. She knows they are, uh, that they are going to kill her. But the thing is that she doesn't want to die. She would like to live, live anywhere. And uh, she, uh, she knows that she had done wrong by uh, leaving her husband. And he is a very good fellow. And she says if it were any other woman who had done this to her husband, she would have been the first one to punish that woman. That kind of a good person he is. But even then, her love for Aravasu was much, much more than that. And this is why and her uh, uh, caring mind or her um, generosity is something that she can't just uh, put a stop to. That's why she came over and uh, tended to Aravasu, saved his life. But this factor is there. She is young. She doesn't want to die. And she knows as sure as anything that her brother and her husband will find her and will kill her with no words. Okay. In the sense that they'll remain silent. They'll start talking only after killing their quarry. 
not before it. And even if the quarry is a human being, they will not talk. They will just kill it and then will ask the question or listen to questions or even uh, whatever that is being asked to them. There is no asking them. So she doesn't want to die. And that is indeed a pathetic enough situation with the Nittila. So here you find that the actor manager wants Aravasu for the performance at the fire sacrifice. But it is not allowed, uh, but you will find that, uh, but he is not allowed there. Uh, but Aravasu is not allowed at the fire sacrifice. So because uh, he is the one person or they believe at the words of Aravasu, uh, the crowd believes that it is he who had killed his father and he had uh, uh, burnt the father and also done the penitence and he's coming back from there. He had revealed that to the uh, audience or to the people who had assembled there. And Parvasu had pointed out his finger at uh, uh, Arvasu and had uh, sent him out of the uh, enclosed area telling him that he is not needed there because he makes out before the people that it was Aravasu who had killed the father and the presence of such a criminal is uh, uh, something that a fire sacrifice will not need. They need. It's a holy place and they don't want any people who had done such a crime, such a sin. And so uh, the guards, uh, the king's guards had come and had taken away Aravasu and had dragged him, beaten him and put him in a cemetery because the fire sacrifice is nearing completion. They want the chief priest to complete it and they don't want nothing to stop that because to them, the seven years of fire sacrifice means appeasing God Indra and bringing rain to the country, the uh, to the people and to the country. And this is utmost, even if it means killing Aravasu, a Brahmin, they will do it because that their necessity or their need is much more than that. So here you find that the actor manager, uh, you remember the, uh, the uh, prologue when the actor manager comes out and asks for the performance. And the king says, no, it is not um, uh, possible because we are doing a fire sacrifice. Let us complete that. And uh, even if I do allow you to have that, the priests all say that we have been chanting mantras for a long time and we need a relief uh, and this uh, uh, acting, this play will relieve our mind. And uh, the king says, even if I give permission, the chief priests may not give permission. So naturally, they ask for the chief priest to uh, give permission and the chief priest says, um, uh, well, drama or play, how can it be? But uh, the actor manager says, I have a message from your brother. And at that, Paravasu just stops. And the actor manager had acted out Aravasu's message to the, uh, to the company, that is the king, the priest and uh, Paravasu. And Paravasu gives permission. Well, if this is what he feels, then let him be here or let the uh, play be performed here. This is how the prologue ends. You have to refer to that and you will find that this is how the prologue ends. So the actor manager wants Arvasu for the uh, performance at the fire sacrifice but he is afraid that the presence of Arvasu will make the chief priest angry. He is not allowed to. But at the same time he wants the performance which will bring food to the family which is indeed uh, something that any father will uh, think of in these uh, dire circumstances. There is no rain, no food to be had, no job, no crops and nothing. For seven years of drought, the whole earth was dry, uh, dug like anything and uh, there is no solution. And this is something that on which uh, everything depended on. At least this uh, will mean that he will get food for his family and uh, they can have some, uh, or the, he, his children will be having food for some days. And this is a solution, which uh, uh, this needs a solution, which he is uh, 
ready to put before Arvasu. It tells Arvasu of a solution. <clears throat> but there is a need for a uh, lot of face makeup. Moreover, some more, uh, they will be using masks also. And there will be dance and costumes. And uh, face makeup, dance, costumes, all will go and hide Arvasu. All the uh, face of Arvasu. So there is nothing to be um, <clears throat> really, <clears throat> nothing to be afraid of. So no one is going to recognize Arvasu for Arvasu. They will be uh, looking at Arvasu as a character and nothing more. So naturally this he will have to do. And so you find that the actor manager has a plan which is feasible enough and which will make uh, his play perform there. And Arvasu also will be able to use the play in order to question Paravasu. Arvasu's intention is totally different from that of the actor manager. Actor manager really wanted to, uh, appear, uh, to bring food to the family. Arvasu wanted to get the answer for the question, why, from Paravasu. And the direct confrontation is not going to happen. And he doesn't want to kill his brother, take vengeance on him and uh, let him die without the answer. So the two of them combined forces together, that is the actor manager and Arvasu, and they are going to have a performance. And through the performance, they are going to get the answers for a lot of things. And this is the plan. But the thing is that when people see the face of Arvasu, they are going to react. They are going to take up arms once again. His presence is not needed there at the fire sacrifice. And so uh, Aravasu knows that he is not the one who had sinned. He is not the one who had committed the crime. And so he knows in his mind that it is not his presence that is going to do harm to the fire sacrifice, but the presence of Paravasu. But he needs to uh, confront his brother. And without the... Um, the, without the face makeup, he will be recognized as Arvasu. So with the face makeup, with the dancing costumes, no one will recognize Arvasu. So the actor manager proposes that there will be a, a mask or face makeup, lots of it, and you will be painted all over your face so that people will not recognize you. And when you start dancing, people will never think that a Brahmin will dance in this manner. And with a lot of costumes in which you will be dressed up, not like you, but but, by, uh, but like one of the characters of the play. They are not going to recognize this character as Arvasu, but as the character itself. So the actor manager has got a perfect solution for Arvasu. Arvasu wanted to confront his brother. Actor manager wants a play to be performed and wants some food for his children and for his family. And uh, they, two of them combined will have a solution for their problems. Actor manager's problem and also that for uh, that of Arvasu. So here, dear uh, students, in Act 3, when you reach the part, half part of Act 3, you come across a, a portion where you find the uh, solution uh, proposed by Arvasu and he was able to convince the actor manager that he can act, sing and dance like any other uh, actor of the troupe or even better than them. And uh, uh, the actor manager is convinced that being a Brahmin, he'll be able to buy hard the dialogues within no time at all because he knows reading and writing. Unlike the other people uh, of his cast, of his uh, group, they need to be practiced a lot, but this man will be very quick at uh, understanding and he is also very quick at uh, uh, by hearting the, the dialogue. And he proves to be a great boon to the troop. So uh, he is not, though he had a, a certain reservation uh, or trying to bring in Arvasu, a Brahmin to the troop, the way Arvasu dances convinces him that this is indeed a naturally talented actor because acting in those days means singing and acting and also dancing all three together nowadays we have only films which has this 
and in the earlier plays, stage plays also this usually happened. But even then singing, dancing and acting was also part of the stage play. But now in the on the stage performance, maybe you have dancing and um, maybe you have dialogue or acting, but the singing is naturally from the background. Uh, because uh, most of these people will not be able to do that. And uh, there is a mic on the stage nowadays, but in those days they didn't have a mic. The actors will have to uh, speak loudly for the whole audience to listen. And the, and, uh, the audience was a limited audience, not the type of audience that we have now. They had uh, uh, less population and people coming over to, uh, to watch the performance was also limited because the others had a lot of work at home and they never bothered to get out of the house to see this performance. But only do these people. Here in this case, it is the king and the people of the palace and also the priests. And uh, it's not much. And so um, this is going to happen. And uh, I'm reminding you once again of the prologue and how the prologue ended. And uh, there is also uh, something that I've told you earlier that um, uh, Karnad uses the play within the play to reveal uh, the secrets and things like that. And this play within the play is being performed now or in the uh, uh, or by the uh, by Aravasu and the actor manager before the uh, uh, fire sacrifice. So here we have something more, a lot more to uh, understand. And so here, this is something that uh, they had planned and uh, they are going to do this properly. And there is always the question, what is going to happen to Nithilan? Are we going to take her with us? Or what is, uh, she knows that she is, uh, she will be killed, but she is afraid to die. And the reason is that she would like to live. And the craving for life is there. And that question is there. And in the next part of Act 3, you will find more about Nitilai and what happens to her. And the plan to perform this play before the, um, uh, before the priests and also of the uh, king's courtiers, uh, it is already planned. And Aravasu is going to be an actor along with actor manager. And they are going to perform a play. Usually these plays are all... Um, uh, incidents taken from either Mahabharata or Ramayana, two great epics of India. And in this case, it is an incident from Mahabharata. And it is based on that incident that this play was constructed. And it is that incident which is being played as a play within the play by the actor manager and Aravasu. So uh, the real story of um, the Mahabharata will be acted out now. And there you find the actor manager giving a lot of instructions uh, to Aravasu regarding the mask or the role that he is going to play. You will find all that in uh, the second part of Act 3 in the next video. Till then, good day, good day enjoy your day.